before we begin, I would just like to acknowledge and welcome our new director of Trauma and Form Programs and Resilience. Auburn Water Song. Welcome. We're going to bring you in here and have you sit here and talk with us at some point soon. But we're very happy you're here. Thank you, Senator. Yeah. Good. Okay. So we have online draft 2.1. So Katie McLean, Office of Legislative Counsel, for the record. Yeah. Uh, we were looking at S7 this morning, and you have a new draft of 3.1. <coughs> oh, sorry. Do you have, your new draft is 3.1. Um, so I'll take you through the changes once you have it pulled up. Let's pull it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it, the end is near, so yeah. everybody is really, you know, <laughs> close to the end. Okay. Got it. Okay. So in the first section, we have a report that's due on January 1, 2020, um, and it requires the Agency of Human Services in collaboration with the Green Mountain Care Board to submit to CMS, House Health Care, Human Services, and, health, and Senate Health and Welfare, a plan to coordinate the financing and delivery of Medicaid behavioral health services and Medicaid home and, base, home and community based services with the all pair financial target services. And the plan is to describe a strategy for including Medicaid behavioral services and Medicaid home and community based services in the state's delivery system reform efforts and for supporting the inclusion of these Medicaid services and the definition of all payer financial target services in a subsequent agreement. And I have to confirm this with Ina, but this is already a requirement under federal law, and the only addition here is that the report is um, being sent to relevant committees of the General Assembly. Okay. I'm gonna, I might make some suggestions after we've been through the whole bill. Sure. Okay. Um, so the next section is also a report. It has to do with contracts. Uh, between the DA's, SSA's, and Accountable Care Organization. This says that by January 1 of 2020, the board is to submit a report to uh, the two committees upstairs and to this committee detailing any actions the board has taken involving contracts executed between the DA's, SSA's, and the Accountable Care Organization. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, section three. This is language that you passed last year that created the Director of Trauma Prevention and Resilience Development. In subsection B, you have the list of responsibilities that that person has. And on page three, the very bottom of the page, you're adding a new item to the list, and that is to serve as a resource in ensuring new models used by community social service providers that are aligned with the state's goals for trauma <coughs> prevention and resilience. So, and this is a tough one to do because uh, as I'm talking with people out in the community, there are a lot of people who are very interested in making things happen in their municipalities or in their communities. And that some of them are not fully engaged in trauma-informed programs. And I, I, just, I don't know how to link them, you know, everybody with um, Auburn on, on this, the director. So this was my attempt to help her build a framework with community organizations and groups who are interested in reducing trauma. And, and it links in with substance misuse um, programs at the local level. It's the best we could. Okay. Okay. The next section, section four, has to do with um, the Dolce model, the embedding somebody from the parent-child centers within pediatric practices for the purpose of um, connecting patients with the correct services. So this is a report that would be due on October 1st of this year. Uh, the director um, is to submit the report to the Health Reform Oversight Committee in consultation with stakeholders, um, assessing the model in which social service providers um, employed by the parent-child center networks 
is embedded within a pediatric primary care practice and the director is to make recommendations uh, to further develop the expansion of the model in coordination with any proposals for reform resulting from the CHINS review that um, was requested in last year's budget. So, I mean, this is fine. The, the question I have is we know that things are moving pretty fast out in the community. We don't want to stop the work that's going on. On the other hand, we want to make sure that we have resources to accomplish our goals. That was my question. We're talking about someone employed by the parent-child center being embedded in a pediatric office. It's the reverse from, from my perspective. It's someone from the pediatric office being embedded in the child service center? The parent-child center. So the the app the, the dulce model. For it? The dulce, huh? Who's paying for it? I think they just do it. They just shift where they offer their services. I'm having a hard time. So remember Maybe I haven't oh, been in a pediatric office in a while. But there always was a doctor, a nurse, and a receptionist. Mm -hmm. Are we requiring that pediatric offices hire personnel? And so this is just a report, no, report. On, report on the model. So it's evaluating the model, and there are some parent-child centers who are already implementing the model. Like saying, so this Lamoille is, is already doing yes, it. Yes, they Remember have Scott a Johnson was in. Right, he yes, they have grants to do it. Yes, and now, but now they're doing it in St. Albans and at the Lund Center and the Janet Munt um, Family Center in Burlington is beginning to do it on their own. And their goal is to have a three-year pilot program and then, and then affiliate with, um, the, with the ACO or others. Okay. So I don't. They're, they're doing it. So we've got other places that are implementing the Dulce model or the Dulce program. Is there a fee to buy in to Dulce? No, I don't think so. Okay, so they're implementing. It's really the model just, that they're looking at. Is this just a study of how that's going? Or is this a study of what it would take to have the you know, Central Vermont Parent-Child Center do this? I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to um, Ina and um, Auburn and it's good because you did you did help inform us on this piece. So and you want to talk about that just briefly? <coughs> do you want to come up here to do that? Okay. okay. Ina Beck is director of healthcare reform agency of Human Services. The um, the intent would be to assess the the pilots. Um, it's not, an, the intent okay. is not to evaluate them in a formal way, as an evaluator right. would, but to assess how the pilots are going, how they are being uh, implemented, and to offer recommendations for implementing them more broadly, but also to ensure that those recommendations are aligned with other efforts to assess this model, which okay. are already established or, or are already being discussed. So making sure that everyone who's looking at this model is looking at it in an aligned way. Okay. Is anyone evaluating? There is a proposal for um, an evaluation of this model. The proposal is from the Children in Need of Services work group. And that's in here. And that's in here because before we probably should evaluate. I mean, it hasn't before you spread it. Before you spread it, yeah. and it should be evidence informed. Yes, and that should take. You know, you're talking about changing family behaviors, and um, that's not something you evaluate in one. You, you know, you could do something, but it's got to carry on. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, we, and the, 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 the reality yes. is that nobody wants to get in the way of progress. I mean, we don't want right. to, but at the same time, to ensure that any framework that's in place for these things is going to offer value. And I, I guess I'm a little gun shy. I've been around yeah. long enough to see enough programs that we 
have latched on to mm -hmm. and then it's gone. And I'm still trying to find out what's going on with the visiting nurse, home family visiting that the administ that we were supposed to be getting a better set off once a year. And, and how that well we can ask it said uh, we can ask. We can ask. We will ask. I'm already sick. And the money in the budget adjustment is to do the training for the people at the Department of Health that's necessary in order to implement the New Zealand model. That I did find out. Which money? The in the in the budget adjustment. Well, how how much is that? Did you want to? We think one one minor recommendation would be to uh, strike the language that says uh, the social service provider employed by a parent child center because we think that there may be instances where there may be a social service provider embedded that's employed by another agency. Um, <coughs> with regard to that language, it might be nice to have some clarity. So I was under the impression that the Dulce model was somebody from the PCC in the pediatric practice. Um, if there are links the, in the reverse, that there's um, somebody from the pediatric office um, within the parent child center, we should have language about formal linkages. I don't think there is. I don't, in the existing pilots, I don't think there is a reverse. Okay. In Lamoille County, mm -hmm. where Apple Tree Pediatrics exists, it's embedded in the PCC. So, it's not. No, it's the PCC is embedded in the pediatric practice. But the, they they meet at the PCC. Okay, I'm with you. That's fine. It, it's fine. Okay. Yes. As long there's as they're together, and as long as they're reaching out for issues together, it works. We don't want to misstate it. So how would it be a social service person hired by somebody else? I mean, if you have a, if you have a uh, behavioral health uh, uh, or mm -hmm. a social worker working for an agency, right, for the parent child center, would you want that person to be there? Would that be the pre preferred way to go? I don't think there's a judgment on the preferred way to go. We just wondered if there was an if if something emerged that was okay. that model that the person was employed by another provider. How does that work with the parent child centers? So um Sure. Fal Falco Schilling uh, on behalf of the parent child centers. So we can imagine a scenario where for instance the pediatric office was the actual employer, but they were coordinating with the care coordination team at the parent child center. So I think that is a scenario that imagines what, what Ian is discussing. But primarily now in these pilots, it is an employee of the parent child center within the pediatric office, though I should say this is not a pilot that's been adopted across the entire parent child center network. Not all the parent child centers are engaged or intending to engage in this pilot. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that as well. Okay, so should we add some language to that? I think the way we get to that is the suggestion that we heard um, okay. striking employed by a parent child center and just being silent on who's employing the social okay. service provider. All right. Um, Thank you. So that brings us to section five, which is the effective date. And you'll notice there's language um, below the effective date, and that's renaming um, the bill after, um, after passage to be an act relating to social service integration <coughs> in Vermont's health care system. Mm -hmm. If you remember, the initial bill was very specific to ACOs, and the mm -hmm. title reflects that. That mm -hmm. the, the, it was a placeholder in June, I think, or May, or sometime ago, right? You know we haven't heard? Huh? Well, Go ahead. We're, no, we'll focus on the um, places like Head Start who may also be dealing with a lot of the same mm -hmm. 
people. Mm -hmm. um, we have the parent-child centers, but I think Head Start may be targeting more of the kids that we'd like to pick up. So at some point in this process, we should probably hear from them. Okay. It's probably too late to do a to, to crossover. It, yes. But I agree with you. That's a really good suggestion. I mean, if the idea is to have a safety net without holes. Right. And to, to coordinate all, to make sure that everybody gets if they want, and they have to give permission. Right. Um, a, you know, a, a somebody to come in with new children and provide the support and the access to services, et cetera, et cetera, no matter who provides it. But that somewhere there is that service is being provided. Okay. And Head Start is federal money. Okay. That would be. Um, is there actually, is there anyone else in the room who would like to make a comment? Behind you. <coughs> okay, so I have somebody back here. Hi. Susan Barrett. Susan Barrett. Okay, if you want to uh, state your name for the record. Yes, yeah, Susan Barrett, dr um, Executive Director of Green Mountain Care Board. Um, I just wanted to comment on, um, I don't know which section it is here, section three, where the board is it section two? Yes. Um, about specifically the language on the board shall submit a report to. No, not the the reporting. Uh, yeah, report contracts with designated and specialized service agencies. Um, just clarification on detailing any actions the board has taken involving contracts executed between the designated special and specialized service agencies and accountable care organization. Um, it, it, I, I would be concerned of interference of contracts with um, those agencies. We are certainly made aware in our budget process of the work of the ACO. So may, can I come back to you with um, an alternative language or? Well, I mean, the goal is to really understand what those relationships are. So. Okay. Um, we don't want to know that there are five different contracts with one organization. We, we really want to know how they're put in place and what what that means for access to um, <laughs> support programs by people. Okay. So that so we are looking for that. Where it's, it may it may. Yeah. Could I could I you can. offer some yeah. Why don't you language? Because I'm yeah. not. Yeah. No, I, I think it's a perfectly. Um, except to the last, it's just yeah. the wording on it. Yeah. What about um, detailing the components of any contracts executed between the DAs, SSAs, and accountable care organization? Component, but that, so that we would get in, you would talk about the contracts and the, the type contents. The con but the specifics that could be kept private, I would think. Yeah, that okay, we're terms. getting a conversation going. So, Lucy, you want yeah, to so Yes, maybe if you could clarify exactly what you're looking for for yeah. one care, yeah. maybe we can offer a letter instead of. You go after the Green Mountain Care Board. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it's a Green Mountain Care Board has that responsibility of looking at this stuff anyway. Right. So, I, I think the goal is to really understand the extent of services that are being offered and how those contracts are. are are put in place, what they mean, and it, and going to the board rather than the ACO, I think is the right thing to do. And have the ACO submitted to us? No. Well, you're, we already, them you're them. already getting yeah. that information, and you mm -hmm. can do it um, can do it cooperatively with the ACO. We're not asking to have all those contracts laid out <coughs> in black and white, but we are, we do want to know what mm -hmm. what exists and what services are being offered. Um, just because we, we're trying to move this whole thing forward. We do not want to get in the way of that, but we do want to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So if we get caught between a rock and a hard place. So if you want to offer some something, if yeah. you want to yeah. get together yeah. and yeah. make some suggestions, yeah. I, that would be welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. That would be great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, no, because 
just to clarify, I mean, at least my perspective is that the ACEO is, is together as an organization is doing really good work. And it is an independent private organization. But it, there are elements of it that include state dollars. And so we want to know that we are benefiting um, from our investment. That, that's all. Okay. Yeah, I think that makes sense. <coughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. It's a tricky place. <laughs> We're getting used to it. Get in the contract. We're getting the contract. Jill. Hi. Jill Olson, uh, uh, Executive Director of the VNAs of Vermont. I had two comments. One, uh, I think, picks up on something, Senator Cummings, that you were saying, which is in the report on the um, the DULCE program, um, we've also got a, uh, a program that is federally funded for nurse home visits yeah. to uh, prenatally and then uh, 18 months postpartum. Right. That was the that was the program we had a lot of talk about right about this time last there year. Was the, that's the New Zealand model. That the New Zealand. Australia. 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 <laughs> oceans. You have a different accent. Yeah. yeah, right. So we was not the one we had that we ditched that now we're... That's correct. Yeah. We ditched the nurse family partnership and yeah. now we're using a different model. And but but that program is federally funded and the caseloads that we are serving are entirely dictated by the number of dollars that we're getting. And so there has not been, to my knowledge, an evaluation of whether we have waiting lists or sort of how whether okay. there's a, a need that's not being met. And so it seems to me that as long as you're looking at this issue, that it may be too early, and I, I would want to, we could ch we could chat about that, but I, I don't want to be, I don't want the home health agency nurse home visiting program to get left out of an examination yes. of how that pro those programs are going because they're they that, play a really critical role. That to me is the important. Well, so we should get an update is, on that. Yeah, we. Yeah, I think an update. An update. An update. I'm, yes. you know, we're not looking. We're not looking for the mile long report. No, I yeah. don't want to write one. Yeah. Uh, we can, we can, <laughs> I'd like a bullet. Okay. Yeah, I'd like yeah. a bullet too. Colors. <laughs> and then I had another comment, uh, and I may just be misunderstanding the language, but um, in section one, where you talk about describing, uh, uh, supporting the, the very last line, and supporting the inclusion of these Medicaid services, meaning uh, home and community-based services, in the definition of the all-payer financial target services in the subsequent agreement. So if that means that we take risk, I don't want that <laughs> because I'm very concerned about very underfunded home and community-based services moving to a risk-based model. Nobody's talking about that right now. Uh, and that's how it reads to me, that we would potentially be asked to continue to shrink when, in fact, under this model, we should be growing and suggest that we would be taking risk. And we are very far away from being ready for, for that because our margins are so small and um, there's not a whole lot of room, really, in our capacity for that. So I'm not sure what you, what's intended there, but when I read those words, that's what I read. Oh, I, and I, I, I agree with you. Just say that. I was like, I don't think that's a good idea. I'm not sure us. what I just read. It's a plan, and it's a plan to strategize how to include and the delivery system efforts, and so that in in including home based Right, but you said it says all pay or financial target services. That's where I, when I see that we're going to be in the financial target, I okay. see risk yeah. and reducing our budgets, not growing our budgets. We're trying to reduce the hospital hospital expenditures and increase the community expenditures. Let's, let's give large. Ina a chance to respond to that. We are required by our all-payer model agreement with the federal government to submit a plan that addresses um, how Vermont would propose in a subsequent agreement to uh, coordinate the delivery of these services and with the all-payer financial target services, the total cost of care. That plan is something that doesn't have, the plan is a, a process that we have to undertake <laughs> and Vermont's plan does not have to our plan may be that the plan that we propose to CMMI is going to be based on the 
readiness of our system and not necessarily incorporating everything that they are asking here. The readiness of our system including our financial capacity Correct. to accomplish those goals. Correct. So in that sense, it might actually help home health. If the, if the federal government were to learn that we need more money, I don't because we, no, I, I know, don't. I know. No, they're going to say in the <laughs> no, and they're going to they're going to say in the overall that, that they want us to cut money. I it's know. in the individual that she wants. She doesn't want to get caught up as as the individual. Right. Yeah. yeah. Could I suggest that by removing the last sentence yeah. doesn't change the meaning of what you're trying to get from the Agency of Human Services? Mm -hmm. So the last okay. sentence is just. But a, but just so everyone knows that the that the agency will be putting that into their proposal to the federal or the report. That, and that's already in place. Yeah. We already yeah. expected. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We're required that's to work through this that's process fine. and where we arrive okay. based on that. Yes. Yeah. All right. How about if we look at our base Medicaid funding? Well, we're going to we're going to do that when we're getting into the budget. That's one of the things we absolutely must do. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yes. Just before we move off of this, so it sounded like the committee was in favor of adding language about the home visiting. Is this mesh? Is that? Yes. It's not. We don't call it that. I can. Okay. I can talk. <laughs> Okay. I can talk to you offline. Okay. It's not it's strong family from Australia. Australia. No, it's yeah. not that okay. visiting. Okay. This is mesh. There's mesh in here. <laughs> yeah, can we I can talk with Ina and, and I'll just suggest some language maybe. That would be great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So get better. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, uh Falco Shelley on behalf of Parent Child Centers. Um just looking at this current draft, um, we would request that parent child centers be included okay. under section two. Uh, with a report back about statewide contracts. Um, similar language in the original introduced draft included the parent-child centers, yep. and uh, you heard from Claire Kendall earlier yep. about the fact that contracts right now are not kind of statewide and integrated with the entire network. Um, so I think that would be a good opportunity to hear about how that integration is happening. Okay. Um, right now, most of those contracts are through the Dulce project, which doesn't cover the entire network. How did that language get taken out? You said the language had been in earlier? Well, was it for, in the original bill? So in the original bill, which yeah. is a slight, slightly and different I, language. No, we, I, I agree with that. I think that should be in there. I do. And I know that there are those who disagree with that, but our, our whole goal has been to um, utilize the services that exist in the state, and especially the parent child centers. So am I adding the original language from the bill is introduced back in? That um, maybe we want to narrow it down given the scope? Including, I, I think, at, where, where's my section? So um, the, the language in the bill is introduced so that there would be a report from the Green Mountain Care Board evaluating the manner and degree to which social services, including services provided by the Parent-Child Center Network, DAs, SSAs, Home Health and Hospice, are integrated into um, certified ACOs. And then the evaluation shall address the number of providers receiving payments through one or more ACOs, um, the extent to which any existing relationships between social service providers and ACOs address trauma and resilience, um, recommendations to enhance integration between social service providers and ACOs if appropriate. Well, maybe that if you're replaced, but executive director there did not. So, yes, put this back in. Okay. I know that we're going to have a disagreement around the room. And then do we still want the existing mm -hmm. section two? I guess I'm asking, do you want both sets of language, or does this, from the bill as introduced, replace what's in draft 3.1 section two? Um, let's look at them together, and then we'll make a decision. I know we only have one more day, but we do have a little bit of time to, to look at those okay. together. So I'll include them both yeah. in the next draft. Just to speak for my afternoon. Yeah, it's hard to, I can't answer that question about seeing it right in front of me. In the section one, yeah. um, because it's about financing, should we say that the report should go to the professions to Oh, yeah, put the report to a program. Okay. Or, what, yeah, because if it's coming in during In section, section one, section two, you know, we don't need, you need to. Need to yeah. Section one specifically mentions the financing of stock. Okay. And what about the language from the bill is introduced? 
um, the integration of ACOs. We'll, we'll hold off until we see it together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else want to <coughs> changes or suggestions? So here's what I think we should do. Um, the, there are people in the room who need to talk with one another and, and help us as we formulate this. So I'm going to suggest that you do that and get your information to Katie within the next few minutes. I, I can't, you know, we're going to have to do it this morning somehow. We're going to have to get the information. and. Um, and then we'll we'll see where we are. If we can look at a draft later this morning or okay. first thing tomorrow. Sure, I have to be in another committee at um, ten. Okay. So I have twenty five minutes. Of so so, should, so, so I think it sounds like there are a lot of little hallway conversations yeah. going on, and that, that would be helpful to us. Okay. Yeah. Thank you all. I appreciate your time. And I know that we're going to hear comments from people about the draft, so maybe just take a, a look at it. The, the, the difficulty of doing what's in the bill as introduced is that it's difficult. <laughs> yes, all that. That we went around and around. It's really complicated. And, you know, so if you, if you tell the insurance company to go ahead and do the simple bill, then they, they're doing it. If you tell the hospital to go ahead and do the simple bill, they're doing it. If you tell the patient to mix that, do that, they're doing it. So there is no simple. There is no simple. So so we need to pass this off. I, there's no other way to do it now. So we're waiting on brand, right? Yeah, we are waiting on brand. So why, we can't sure why are we doing any? Well, because the, the people are concerned that they are getting bills late and or that they're inaccurate. and. So let's see if there's a way to smooth that over. The other thing is that the federal government has asked for hospital transparency, and the, fe the hospitals are already in the process of trying to post that. So we'll, we'll look at that when it comes back. Blue Cross and Blue Shield already has billing information, the charges and well, you're, for their you can patients. You figure out what you, what you owe. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. is it the patient's responsibility, but once the hospital posts its stuff, then the patient looks at what their premium offers them, and, you know, so it gets to be I, more I, complicated than I, that. I've said this before, but the place I get hung up is when you get to have Medicare, and you have a supplemental, and then the supplemental yeah. company is out of state. I don't know how we do anything about that. We we, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm looking at Susan and, and uh, Sarah, uh, the, we don't have the out-of-network problem in this state, so we, no. we've correct, that's all done. Right, the big problem is solved. That's the big problem. That's the big problem that was in the New York. Maybe we should put that down in the bill and say, hallelujah, we <laughs> don't have any problem. <laughs> Yeah. So, yes, sir, sure. but uh, <laughs> but we did we did hear from some people and groups that are very concerned about this. So I don't think we can ignore it. <laughs> I think I don't know that we can ignore it, but I'm not sure there's anything we can do about it without making it worse. Um, that would be unusual for us. I know, we never make anything worse. <laughs> it's like, it is a very complicated system. <laughs> we have multiple insurers. We have federally regulated insurers and state regulated insurers. And we have hospitals. And inside the hospitals, we have, and we have offices. And, when we have some place, some poor individual that decides on a code or makes a typo. Yeah. And somebody's bills get messed up. And yeah, that's a problem. It's a problem for everyone. But I'm not sure you can fix it. There's just Humans aren't perfect, and I, 
That's right here. Thank you. I just don't want to make it worse. Yeah, no, I don't either. Uh, and and I and so yeah, big systems out there. Now we were working at one point going to a common Oops, okay. code. Common codes, which Colorado has done remarkably well. We were working on that. Um, that Massachusetts, New Hampshire, so I don't know if we ever have an all there. payers claim database. We didn't and that's, never get there. Yeah. So, so that's what the first uh, section yeah. was about. Okay. So we'll we're going to leave that for now. Sorry. Um, we'll come back to it. Um, at, we're scheduled to come back to it after at 10:30. So, I think we have Bryn here early. So. Cool. Do you mind coming up? I'm, I just want to talk about what we heard yesterday and to get some clarifications on the Prop 5 proposal that we have. Grin, um, thank you for all your help on this. The, I have a couple of questions. So if you all have your Prop 5, well, we have it online. I have one that's marked up a little bit. If we were to go through the Constitution, and look at the articles that of Constitution that, that, that are in there. <clears throat> Would there be some that have lead-in sentences the way our article does? So, I mean, one of the concerns we heard from, from one person yesterday, and I want to clarify that concern. One of the concerns we heard was about the first sentence in the article, the article being entitled Personal Reproductive Liberty, but then the first concern it was that that first sentence might stand alone and give, um, offer sort of controversy or allow for a lawyer to argue something different <coughs> from what our intent is. Right. Um, so for the record, uh, Bryn Hare from Legislative Council. I think that you may have heard from the Attorney General on this point yesterday. Um, I wasn't in the room for, for the entire hearing, but I would just point out that a court um, or a judge isn't going to take one sentence out of the Constitution, just like they wouldn't take one sentence out of the statute and interpret it out of context without looking at the, um, looking at the whole article. So I would just point out that the article has a title of um, that indicates what the article is about, and um, the remainder of the article makes it clear that the article is there to protect um, personal reproductive liberty. And again, I think we talked about this the first time I was here to talk about the Proposal 5, um, the way courts interpret a constitutional provision, um, is to look at the provision in its entirety, and the court will look to um, a legislative intent from the record, including the purpose section, um, in interpreting what the legislature meant by that language. I guess. Keep, go ahead. No, I've, I've, this is our opportunity. I've, I've heard, I think you were there for the discussion. Well, I was going to ask the same question, but go ahead, Seth. Yeah, uh, that one lawyer said, well, as a lawyer, I find that a lawyer's dream, you know, uh, to determine your own life's course. And I could take that sentence and apply it to almost anything out of context. Mm -hmm. That they could, my example was the 14 year old that wants to get rid of his parents who won't let him do whatever. Mm -hmm. Or the 16 year old. I mean, I should be free to because the Constitution says I am guaranteed the right to determine my own life's course and wasn't sure that it was necessary to the proposal. Did I get that correct? 
that was the idea. Well, or how was it necessary? Or not how not was it necessary. Was well, it this necessary. Boy, how was it necessary? That it I think the explanation for how it's necessary can be readily um, put forth, but then the question would be, would you take, would it be, what would happen if you took that sentence and you said the right to personal, right to personal, to determining, to reproductive autonomy, including uh, to somehow to say determining one's own life course. Oh. To, yeah, put, put to it add in, a put phrase. Add it add it into the second. Yeah, to add it right into the second sentence. So central to does liberty. that, does that, what does that do? Makes I'm really we're, 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 we're sort of confusing. This, this has been a question that's yeah, not only coming exactly. from the testimony, but we've also talked with other uh, senators who have expressed a similar um, concern, and some of those senators happen to be lawyers, so we really listen. <laughs> I think if we want, if what we want to say is is reproductive autonomy is a, a right under the Vermont Constitution. We don't have, we don't need the first sentence at all. We well, I can go to the, the right to to let's to debate personal. that. But the other thing is, I I got to say, I, mean, I raised this yesterday, and I, I don't want to keep beating the same drum, but but I'm I'm not entirely satisfied that that we're sort of resorting to originalism, the argument that that the court would would understand the context in which the the language exists, and they go to and. Again, I want to say, I think the Brigham decision and the Baker decision were both correctly decided, and I think they were wonderful um, improvements in, in the laws and the quality of life in Vermont. And I was proud to do the legislation that they required. But they were certainly not respectful of the original intent. The original intent of the Common Benefits Clause was to calm down the political enemies of my I mean, we know this. It's a very good record. There was a, a lot of people in Vermont thought this whole convention in Windsor to write a new the Constitution so, so, was a plot by the Allens to rip their neighbors off and get richer. Okay, Senator, okay. So the, the issue here is whether or not how that first sentence improves our understanding of this piece. And I will say that some of the testimony yesterday was very compelling in that area. For example, when one has family planning and decides whether or not to have a child, that for a woman can mean the difference between continuing a professional career or not. That it can, or earning money sufficient to support her, her family. That is an extremely important part of determining one's life course. For me, that is really, really important. So I know we can that there are those who would say that this sentence on its own could be taken to have different meaning uh, and be interpreted. But um, I have to listen to Bryn again. So so would it would it be is it possible for a savvy lawyer to pull that out and make an argument for another um, cause? I think. Um Without commenting on whether an attorney could do it, okay. um, commenting on what, what would the court take that as a legitimate um, argument based on the context in which the sentence can be found, including the fact that the article is titled Personal Reproductive Liberty, and the remainder of the article is about that specific right. So um, I think it, it would be tricky. It would be a tricky argument to pull off. A very tricky argument to pull off. Yeah, that's a good. That's a quote I can make. <laughs> well, the attorney yeah, general. No, no, this is this is helpful. No, this thing. is very helpful um, to us. So, that, and but it it has become kind of been elevated to a concern um, that we've heard. Constitu I mean, constitutional language tends to be very terse. Okay, our under the U.S. Constitution, our rights of free speech are a very short subordinate clause. That's all. It's, it's af after the freedom of religion stuff, comma, nor abridging free speech, comma, and then it goes on to other things. You, 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 it, it, it says, the Constitution is, it works best, I think, when it says what it means and nothing else. 
The Second Amendment is unusual in the U.S. Constitution in that it does explain itself. It's the, not only shall the right to bear arms not be infringed, the reason is because of the necessity of a well-regulated militia. And uh, that is, that's an a endless debate as to what that means and how that applies. Um, I, I think we, we do best when we just say what we mean and leave, it all, leave the rest of I think we do mean that a, a woman gets to choose her own life's course and that reproductive autonomy is, is directly uh, aligned with that ability. Uh, because otherwise it's, it's a very sort of clinical uh, medical procedure. But what we're really saying is that we want women to have the, the choice about when and where they, um, or, you know, at what time during their lives they have children whether or not they have children at all. And so I do think it's actually a larger right that we're trying to It gets to, to family assert. planning, it gets to the use of contraception. Reception, yeah. It, and, uh, seriously, it does, and it's not, and it, and it just goes not just to the woman, but remember also to the man. Yeah. Yes, yeah. No, so, again, I, I agree <coughs> with the reasoning as to why this right should exist. But you, you don't necessarily need to write the entire argument into the Constitution. No, James right. Madison wrote voluminously on separation of church and state. He wrote voluminously, but all the First Amendment says is Congress will make no law regarding um, the establishment of religion or limiting the free exercise thereof. That's it. The, the, the argument for it, it exists outside the Constitution. OK, so looking at this article, would it be would it be helpful to talk a little bit about the genesis of the language? Yes, yes it would. Okay. Thank you. So, so in in crafting the article originally, we talked about rooting it in some of the United States Supreme Court jurisprudence, finding the right to abortion, and um, specifically the nature of the regulations on that right. Um, so. The, case, uh, the court in Casey and reaffirming Roe versus Wade described the centrality of the decision um, of whether or not to bear a child to a, woman, to a woman's dignity and autonomy, her personhood and her destiny and her life's course and her conception of her place in society. Um, and then there was some additional language, uh, I think that the Attorney General mentioned yesterday that came from a, the um, Justice Ginsburg's dissent in the Gonzalez versus Carhartt case, um, in which she concluded the legal challenges to undue restrictions on abortion procedures don't seek to vindicate some generalized notion of privacy. Rather, they center on a woman's autonomy to determine her own life's course, and thus to enjoy equal citizenship and stature. So the, I think that the idea was really to place some context on the um, nature of those regulations that would seek to restrict the right. So basically, what you're saying is that this was lifted um, in, in large part right out of that the Roe v. Wade decision in the language that was there. Um, it's actually the Casey Court's interpretation of Roe v. Wade. But yes, yes. Have we got that? Um, yes, today. It was today. Yes. Again, I mean, I'm not disputing any of that language. That's that makes good sense. My question is, does it belong in the Constitution? The Constitution is not a discussion. It is a. It's how we're constituted. It's simply the well, well, I, I don't see this as a discussion, no. Senator. So we, we're going to have to disagree on that. But I want to listen to what <coughs> Grant has to say. It's not a discussion. Oh, I mean, one's life course is pretty clear yeah. that if you choose reproductive liberty and you choose to have an abortion or you choose contraception or family planning, that is your life's course from right. that point on. No, I, yes. I, as I say, I agree with that. Yeah, I, okay, I, good. So when we argue for the constitutional amendment, that belongs in the argument. Yes. The question is whether it belongs in the Constitution. Well, the life, of course, belongs in there. It's one short sentence, I think. I don't yes. think the rest of it is. Provides good context. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, we were working on S7. 
and I had to stop. So I missed something important, I know. No, we all stopped. We all stopped. <laughs> we can hold no, I made my argument again. Well, so the, I, I mean, the question, the question for us yeah. and for people yeah. who are around the room who have worked very hard on this uh, proposal uh, is how to deal with that. Um, and that's a political question at this point because it's not people who have taken testimony, it's people who are looking at it um, differently from the way we are. So if, is there a way to incorporate that sentence into the article without losing meaning? I'm asking you. If there's a way to incorporate the sentence into the article without losing meaning. Right, fighting to make it one whole sentence. <clears throat> And whether that works or not, and you know, it, it, it very well could work. Yeah, I think it, I think that could be. Yeah. I have a suggestion. If okay. You don't Before want you have a suggestion, okay, go ahead, go ahead, make your suggestion. Sorry if I'm annoying you. No, right? you're I, not. I, think I was going to follow up on what, grid. what my job is. I think go this ahead. is what we do here. Senator, okay. I was following my, my question of Brim. Okay. Right. But you can interrupt me, and I'm happy to have Oops. you make a comment. I didn't okay. think I was interrupting you. I thought I was answering your question. <laughs> I think we could we could um, uh, do away with the period and put in a comma and change between the first and second. Second, hold on. I'm just. I had the text in front of me. Good God, does anyone else have the text? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We'll okay. Uh, the the people being guaranteed the liberty and dignity uh, to determine their own life's course, comma the right to personal reproductive, et cetera. Ooh, that's good. I will, I'll have to ask our, our word master. I think, that, I think we could do that. I was also thinking the right to personal reproductive autonomy is guaranteed and the liberty and dignity to determine one's own life course and central to the liberty protected by this Constitution. Oh, that might work too. Mm -hmm. It does the same thing, but it's Yeah, it puts, reproductive, first, it puts reproductive autonomy first, which does make sense. So what do you think about that? Actually, like Senator Corbett said better, to be honest. I like the broader thing first, yeah. setting the context and then the mm -hmm. okay, well, okay, so we have two choices the, there. The people mean, being okay. guaranteed the liberty yes. and dignity to determine their own life's course, comma, of the right to personal reproductive autonomy is central to what they go on the rest. Yes. And, and could you give yours? Can we look at both of those and write? Yeah, it would be nice to see. Yeah, those. that yeah. would be helpful. What if we do anything? It has to be a formal amendment, right? Yes. We yeah, cannot we, we, well, this out wordsmith. It's we can strike all. Oh, we can. We can, strike we can do it as in. Here. We can strike all. Once it's. And so there will be a. The people will see. We can okay. strike all. Okay. Okay. We can't strike all if someone brings us an amendment. Right. Right. They have to. They have a certain period of time to come back. Right. So um, we also had another. Is it okay to bring up another? Uh, the uh, you know that we got testimony from two different sources to actually insert the word abortion in the purpose. Right. Okay. Hold that thought. Okay. Remind me where that is. That's important. Um, so, so let's 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 help Bryn then. Senator McCormick's suggestion was uh, to put the sentence first with a comma, and then you, Bryn, you had something after autonomy. Mm -hmm. Yep, so I can bring those in and write That would be time. really helpful. I mean, we need to see it. Okay. That'd be good. And then we need to have others comment on it. Um, Would you like that this morning? Or are you planning on possible? Okay. Yeah, if we can get it this morning, it'd be good. We'll probably, uh, my, my plan is not to pass this out right away. Uh, the plan is to have us go through our discussion based on the testimony that we've heard and then and then let it sit. We do not have to meet crossover. But we do have the information in our heads now, so we want to work on it. Okay. If, if, on that, if we just replace the period with a comma, is that grammatically correct? That the people are guaranteed. I think not. I think we'd have to would have to do a slight word change as well. 
the people being guaranteed. Yep. And if I, if I understand the concern that that first sentence um, could broaden the scope of the article mm -hmm. in a way that you do not intend. Right. And this confines it. This makes it a subordinate clause to the right to reproductive autonomy. So it's, it's, it, instead of just standing on its own, this is an ex, it, it's sort of like the, the, the well-regulated militia. Mm -hmm. This is explaining why this following clause is there. Mm -hmm. And that has never been debated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, that. <laughs> okay, all right, so then, then we'll get that. And then, Senator Ingram, you, want, you had something else here. Yes. Um, we heard from both the Attorney General and, I forget, what's it? A, a, I think it was the uh, ACLU. ACLU, yes, thank you. Um, they'd like the word abortion actually added to the, I think it was in B. Yeah, the right. section B in the purpose section, the uh -huh. right to reproductive liberty, including the right to abortion, abortion. is yeah. central to the exercise of personal autonomy. Yeah. I would, I would agree with that addition if it makes sense to include that specifically. Can I ask a question then? Um, I, I think we all heard that. No. And no, I think I we heard. hadn't talked about that earlier. I was missing. Yeah. Oh, you no. were out of the room, Senator. So, so, so no, the we, Senator we heard from, from So you, you, you both too. had an opportunity to listen to the... No, I, I will read the... As long as we put both out of the room. She was only out for a little bit. I got called. Yeah, she, she, she missed the attorney general. Make your puppet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, so, Bryn, the other question that um, sort of arise, arose, arose from the conversation with Senator Bloomer was about the purpose of the purpose mm -hmm. and that whether the purpose is included when it goes on the ballot. No, it is not. It is not. And, um, but what purpose does it serve then? Um, so as he mentioned, it is a relatively recent addition to constitutional amendments that are un under consideration. Um, and my understanding is that the purpose of the purpose section is first to, um, for the senators, and they're um, putting, the, putting the article in context and their consideration of whether or not to pass it. Um, and also as for a court to refer to to glean some legislative intent from the addition of the article. So a court will look to the purpose section in interpreting the article, um, and also the people who are considering the amendment, passing the amendment, will also use it in their consideration. So where does it go? I mean, if it's not in the Constitution itself, and it's not, where is it that the courts can access it? Would that then be in the journal? So it's part of the legislative record. Yeah. So, okay. Thank um, so the very answer. Sorry. So just like they can access the record of this committee and its consideration of the amendment, they can access the original proposal of amendment. Okay. So it's in, in whenever we do a bill in here, they have our findings, even though the findings aren't right. in the and um, because it's a part of the and the, they can yeah. access any any spoken word. Mm -hmm if they so desire, right? Mm -hmm. right? Just like the findings are part of the final act that is, is passed, it's the same for a constitutional yeah. proposal. Okay. That's important to clarify, and that it does not go to the voters. So the only thing that goes to the voters is the article itself. Right. <clears throat> and there's some statutory lead-in language that will also be a part of that. Okay. Who, who, who sends it? to the voters. I know that the governor makes a proclamation that it's coming, but then who puts it, is it the Secretary of State who puts it on the ballot? Has that done? That's in our, one of these things. Yeah. So that is, let me just check. I think that it's one, in one of the handouts that yeah. I gave. Yeah. So it's, my understanding is that the General Assembly has to issue a resolution um, to send it to the voters, and then it's, it's the Secretary of State puts it on the ballot. That happens in the next biennium, right. right. if this yeah. passes and that right. yeah, ensues. And then the yeah. other... No, no, I'm sorry, one other thing is that the Secretary of State has to publish um, a notice about the amendment um, in two, I believe, two widely circulated newspapers for at least three weeks prior to the general election. And is that's, this that's such a thing as a widely circulated? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> where, which, took the which, words right out of my mouth. General, general, I apologize. It's actually general circulation, not wide circulation. General circulation. At some point, we're going to have to we're gonna change the size of the definition. It's <laughs> very difficult and very expensive. Let's give that one to GovOps. Okay. <laughs> that, would be, uh, that would require a constitutional amendment, wouldn't it? Isn't that the Constitution that says no, that? No, uh, that's, oh, that's, that's the oh, yes. They didn't have generally circulated newspapers. They had Paul Revere. They had Paul Revere. They had Paul Revere. Yeah. Well, it says they had newspapers. Yeah, they had newspapers. Okay. Just most people um, can read. More partisan than Fox. <laughs> Crazy partisan. All right, so the, the, we, we, we're, we, the reason I ask these questions is I get questions about that. Mm -hmm. And even though it might be two or three years away, if and when this would go forward, uh, I feel, I don't know. I, it's mm -hmm. nice to have some indicate, uh, you know, okay. inkling of what we should be doing. At what point we go. Yeah, okay. I say, is there anything else from, from the testimony that we heard yesterday that was uh, important for us to sort of read? Re I think that, that just the wording in that first Just sentence, the wording piece to be, to, to out for clarity. Um, so let's look at that. Okay. And um, we are the committee that's always ahead. So <laughs> it will. If you have time, get time. I do. Um, I do. I have, a, I have a little bit of time, so I can go and do that right now and bring it back to the committee, if that would be helpful. Excellent. Okay. And then while you're gone, you can leave now. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you're talking to me. Bye. <laughs> while, while Bryn is gone, um, Katie has miraculously brought together a new edition of S7. So switch gears briefly if she's available. Can you see if she can come down? If she can't, we'll move on. Well, I want to move on until time. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, so Katie has a new draft with the choices in it for us. From okay, S7. we're back to and it's S seven, but she I see we do need her here when we talk about it. Okay. And she and wanted she's to up. be here. Yeah, she's up and she's up and it. If she can get here, but let's go through it, let's look at it, and then, because I don't want to get ahead of people who might want to be involved in the other bills that we have. Is that three point, draft 3.1? Okay, well, I don't have that on mine. I, it's draft 4.1. Okay, okay, I don't have that on mine. Refresh. refresh. I'm, okay. I'm trying here. Refresh. Okay, I've got it. I got it right in front of me. Draft 3.1 or 4.1. And it's all highlighted. You're getting a copy. You got it. Oh, you have it. Oh, yeah, I've got it highlighted. Yeah. So the section two is the choice section of that or that. So let's just. Go through that. So, on or before September 1, the Green Mountain Care Board shall submit a report evaluating the manner and degree to which social services, including services provided by the parent child net, so this is the language from the underlying bill, provided by the parent child network, designated specialized service agencies, and home health and hospice agencies, and interest and integrated into ACOs. Then the evaluation shall include the number of providers receiving payments, the extent to any existing relationships to address childhood trauma resilience, and then recommendations to enhance that integration. Okay, that's, that's good. We're new. looking to move forward. That's the old that was one. In, that's, that was the old in, one. that's the old one. Is that's below the old it, right? one. No, the old one is the first one. That's the old one. So the new one, 
uh, which was the Green Mountain Care Board shall submit a report and to the Senate the services offered by contracts executed between, okay, so the first one is broader. I like the first one. It's very detailed. I like the first, I like the first one. Yeah. I like the first one. There's too much wiggle room in the second one. Okay. So we'll, we'll talk, we'll, we'll have, we'll, we'll, we'll go through it again with Katie because I want to trust our lawyer. Mm. And were there the any folks, other changes? The folks around the room happy with it. Well, they might want to make it fun. Yeah. Are there any other shaded things? Yes. In Where? Section four. Section four. On page four. Social service provider. Okay. Okay. Eleven thirty. Katie will be down. So let's just look at what's here, and then when she's here, we'll finish it. Looking at it, I mean. Um, Strong families. Nurse. Care partnership, yep. the director of trauma resilience, and the director of maternal and child health. She'll submit That's a report the nurse. Yep. to the health reform oversight. So this is in October. This is between sessions. The model in which a social service provider is embedded within the pediatric care practice, including recommendations for further development and expansion of the model, and then including the CHINS report and the Strong Families Vermont Nurse Home Visiting Program. Okay, we'll have to talk about that with Katie. Does it work? I think so. I, and I it works. This, is the, the words, this was a group. Huh? I have read the words, but I helped write the words, so I think it's okay. So it does. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll come back to this at 11.30 when okay. Katie is here. Okay. And we can't do anything else until Jen is here. We're going to look at the bill that Katie redrafted at 1130, but it's online. And so look at it, and all of you look at it, and then shake your head yes. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Oh. Okay, good. Let's take a little break. I think we all need a little break. We'll, break. we'll be back here at 10. I got Jen for two hours. Oh, Brent. We may as well, if we can't have one, we'll have the other. Bryn, come on Do you, you have something for us? I have some copies, um, just enough for the committee. Yeah, good. So let's do this. Why don't we hand them out and, and look at them, and, and then we will come back to them, but not probably not today. We need to, we need to sort of deliberate a little bit on what's here. So for the record, we're in here from Legislative Council. I just put three options together. Um, the last one, I think, is representative of Senator McCormick's language. Um, and the first two are some other options that incorporate that first sentence into the second sentence. Okay, so the so the, there are three different proposals here, and um, why don't we just think about the the, the one that's different? So the, the middle one the middle has, one is different. Doesn't have life course in it, right? That's right. So okay. the first one sort of tries to incorporate almost the entirety of the first sentence into the second sentence, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the second option there, instead of using liberty and dignity to determine their own life's course, changes that to the right to personal reproductive autonomy essential to the liberty and dignity of self-determination that is protected by this Constitution. So it's a new word. <coughs> okay. Either the first two, because they don't, the first one says that you're guaranteed to the, the right to determine your own life's course. That's what was getting us into issues. So taking the taking the light off of that. Yeah, okay. and making it subordinate. 
Okay. okay. What, which one are you saying? Either the first two, I think, work. Okay, so let's do this. Thank you very much for this putting this together. So let's, let's keep our minds thinking about it, and, and the, we can come back to this um, probably not until next week. We'll schedule it in for another uh, discussion, give us time for a reflection, and then we can deliberate further. Yeah, this is great. Thank I, you. I would ask, yeah. as, as courtesy of nothing else, that, that my suggestion also be added to this. It is. No, it's not. Well, it's not, not exactly. No. The third one is yeah. closed, yeah. but it's not. It's not exactly what. So. so the end, therefore. Yeah. And therefore sounds very constitutional. <laughs> So I was just endeavoring to make it grammatically correct and did not, um, I didn't know your exact intent. Okay. So I if you would like to tell me exactly what you want, I can, I can, yeah. Yeah, I can include it. Okay, do that. We'll put guaranteed. that, we should put that down. Yeah. Is Jen Carby out in the hall? If he feels like it, it's not his job. I can do it. Yeah. We know where she is. We have to have a conversation about this. You know, I've tried it for years. You know, you've got all morning, you meet me in the morning, and I get in the afternoon, and here it should be the reverse. Okay, Brynn, do you have Senator McCormick's? I do. And so yes. can we get, before we post it, let's get all of the suggestions and we'll put them, then we'll okay. put them up. Okay. But in the meantime, we have a lot of thinking to do, as usual. And we aren't starting S31 until Jen is here. And Katie's coming back at 11.30. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so we are scheduled straight. Are we on a new draft of S31? Yes, we are. It's um, not a draft, well, but there's some language. Language. language for discussion. Not yet a draft. Yeah, our money's worth out of Greenhouse Care Board. Hmm? Trying to get the money's worth out of Greenhouse Care Board. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> we should have a medical practitioner. I'm Kevin Nolan's a slack. I am going to see. I am slightly looking at this and going, unless we really need to give them any more work, we're getting to the point where we're becoming that personal research library. I'm mean, not. Well, I know, but when you get down, do when you get down and you say we want common codes and we want it published and we want to know exactly what everything. Well, the feds have already said that. Yeah. I know they, yeah. the, the feds have their language. We could say go do what the feds say. But, All right. Okay. Good. Thanks. Two minutes, three minutes. Thank you very much. We don't have to do anything. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just I just went through and said not doing, not doing, not doing. Just, Except, I'm you know, it is important, and, the, and it, it, is. Is, it is very frustrating for people when they either don't get a bill, they get a bill late, and then right. they get that surprise. So I, it's just that so much of it's already happening. Yeah. Well, and sure. the feds are, and the, and the parts is not happening. The feds are actually doing something. I'm not sure we can fix it. I, and, and I think we're blocked to fix it. So, and if we're blocked to fix it, I. We pile so much on the Green Mountain Care Board, should we pile more? Yeah. They want to do this. <laughs> then they can do it. They just lay here. They don't need us to tell them. So let's at least we'll pull up the language. I haven't done that. Just 
telling them to do what we figured out we can't do. Well, in the meantime, read it. It's dated 313.19, and it is 1.1, and it is committee discussion. Yes, simplified bill. That's 31. So the other two bills that Jen is going to be talking about, 53 and 128, um, 53 is a bill that we've been through before and it is um, fairly straightforward. So we'll look at that and we may have to come back to it tomorrow. And then 128 is a new bill that just came in. If we get to that today, just to go through it once, that would be helpful. It is a bill I think that we could take up and pass, but I'm not sure that can happen before crossover. We can, we'll, we'll get some testimony on that. It's a change in the licensure requirement for uh, PAs. Is there a house rule coming over on that? I don't think so. I think it's going to be up to. No. Yeah, no. But is there something coming a big on on the bill? I, I don't know what's in it. There's a lot of finance in it. There's a lot of health and welfare. Mm -hmm. I can't do licensing, but I could. No, you, you don't. Yeah. So we can talk about We can look at that bill when it gets here. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Talking with you, baby. It's cost of Popular person in the. So, Jen, yes. we know that S31 is like one of the most complicated, toughest <coughs> thing nuts to crack. And uh, but we we don't want to leave it alone. We would like to see some simple, explicit. Some of this just want to leave it alone. You might want to do a story. Okay, let me rephrase that. Maybe use a different pronoun. Let me rephrase that. It's not the bill. It's the issue that is so. Critical, I, you know, and how do, how do you resolve it? That that's the question. So you, we you brought us some new language to look at. And why don't you walk us through and we can talk about it? And then people in the room will be able to chip in here and there. We'll we'll get to that. Okay, Jennifer Carvey, Legislative Council. So I sent some language. So did you have my post language? We have it. Okay, yeah, great. 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 So this is some uh, potential language based on a conversation with the chair. Um, and this would direct the Green Mountain Care Board in consultation with interested stakeholders to determine whether, how, and what cost, at what cost, claims information from VCures, our all pair claims database, could be used to determine the actual amounts paid for hospital services delivered in Vermont and how that information could be made readily available to consumers of healthcare services in this state to help inform their healthcare decision making. So remind us what the uh, the uh, VCures is the Vermont patient it's uh, the all pair claims database, database. Yep. but not included in that are uh, self insured. Uh, they some are still including are choosing to to be included. Some are not. So as a result of a Supreme Court decision from a couple of years ago now, um, right. the state cannot require administrators of self insured. Um, business employer plans to report their claims data. To so, we, so we get some of it, but we don't get all of it. So you get some of it through voluntary um, participation, and then you have it from all other payers, including Medicare. So now in states like Colorado or Massachusetts, Maine, and New Hampshire, there is an all-payer claims database that has the hospital data explicit, and you can show which one is more 
costs more than the other or charges more than the other. But it's actually which one costs more at the end of all the claims. It doesn't really tell you the individual uh, insurance coverage. Um, so I'm not familiar with all of them. I have looked at um, New Hampshire's and New Hampshire, and I don't know how how they populate the information, whether it's from their their all payer claims database or a different source. Yeah. But they do have it so that you can go on uh, as any member of the public um, and look at the cost or the prices for different procedures at different hospitals in the state for uh, five or six different insurance companies. Um, you know, that, that may not be the same as um, a, an individual's actual experience depending yeah. on their own plan design, where they are, and their deductible for the year. Um, yeah, that's so two, it, it provides two different things. It's what the hospital charges. Well, there's or what they charge what if I have paid. Yeah, there's right. It's, paid. It, it's the, I mean, I think it's based on the amount actually paid or the amount. Um, through the negotiated rate with the yeah. insurer, um, but it doesn't necessarily indicate for somebody, for different people and different, I don't know how it works with different plan designs in that state, for example. And um, what we were being asked to do, to start with, was to develop one simple bill. So I know what Medicare is going to pay, but then I got the Medicare supplemental that's somewhere well, that's else. that's B. So subsection B is getting potentially at that issue. All right. Uh, okay. you, want, you want to look yeah, at that? Yeah, go ahead, just okay. so we're, we're clear that what what's there. Okay. So subsection B of this proposed language would have, again, the Green Mountain Care Board in consultation with interested stakeholders develop simplified financial procedures for health care services that will coordinate processes between hospitals and payers without re involving the pa requiring the patient's involvement and will provide patients who receive hospital services with a single comprehensive bill that reflects the patient's entire actual financial obligation. And so that's the bill. Yeah, I know as we as we heard more and more about this right now, some hospitals are have, well, I think most hospitals have the financial services section and billing where they work with patients to determine what their... I believe they all do. All yeah, it says that they work with they, the they, insurance company, but okay. we're still getting we're still getting surprises and we're still getting uh, <coughs> complicated bills. So, okay. This and then the final part, and then this is just a placeholder date. Um, I was trying to keep in mind your bill introduction deadline in the Senate for the second year of the biennium. Um, so this would require, on or before November 15th, the Green Mountain Care Board to provide its findings and recommendations on both of those items um, to the committees of jurisdiction, including this committee and the finance committee. Okay. okay, questions from the committee of Jen for any of the sections. So the first section on the all-payer claims database, <coughs> and the second section on the structuring the billing, and we'll November 15th is sufficient time for you if the recommendation comes out. Probably. I was trying to give them enough time to, to draft or to do their work and report back to you. Okay. Um, I don't. I haven't calculated your actual bill request yeah. or draft. That's draft what I'm wondering. How I many things have we requested them to do this year, along with things that mm -hmm. they're already doing? Well, we're going to have to. The we'll first report, report should be on so the report on reports. The report on reports. We have that. I know. Well, we have a committee on committees. <laughs> God, there's one and two in there. <laughs> so, wait till Friday. No, I know. So, I mean, so let's. We'll, let, we'll, we'll go around the room and we'll get comment on, on this, including that, Senator. Um, the, uh, uh, so S31, we, we have talked about as a committee a couple of times, and, in, and we've, we understand the complexity within that billing procedure, but if we don't do anything, then nothing changes. If we, if we start to move forward on this, maybe we can identify some things that will help people. That's our goal. 
So, um, all right. So do you want to ask your question of Susan Barrett who's sitting right behind you? So I don't know. Let's ask, so uh, let's just all stay right in the room and then we can get comments because I know that everyone, there's a lot, there are a lot of people in here who are interested in making comments on this. We'll begin here. So what is, Susan Barrett, yes. Executive Director of the Green Mountain Care yes. Board. Um, would you like me to just comment mm -hmm. on the bill? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first section, um, we actually did a report, speaking of reports, in was 2015. It, was, I couldn't before remember. Before section 21. I can send it off to um, your assistant. It, and it looked, it did a really in-depth analysis of other states and what they're doing using, um, doing price transparency. Some of them um, do use their all-payer claims databases. Some of them do not. The conclusion in this bill, in this report, was that V-Cures was not the best resource when it came to price transparency, um, and that there would be additional resources, funding needed to, to stand up a system. So I can send to, that to improve v cures No, nope, to utilize, um, to, to create a price transparency system in the state. And I, I don't want to misquote the number I have in the back of my mind, $3 million, which was a lot. But New Hampshire, Maine, yep. Massachusetts, they have a- Colorado. Uh, Colorado has, Washington. I think, yep. But they don't all use they're all payer claims databases. Some do, some do not, as Jen referenced. I went out to look at some of them. Oh. Yeah. I mean, Colorado is furthest ahead in terms of having codes all analyzed. And is there is there any benefit to following up and looking further at what they've done? Is there anything transferable there? Um, we are we're open to looking at what other states are doing, and and reporting back to you on that. I just, I don't want to commit to something that I'm not sure VCURES can do. So in terms of the language that's here, <coughs> using our database isn't adequate, but could, is it possible that we could, or uh, you could, the Green Mountain Care could build, the board could build on the 2015 data and bring back some recommendations that might help us improve um, the billing system that we currently have. I, I could look at the report and see if we could update it from 2015. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if in this first section we can actually get you exactly what you want. Okay. And I'm concerned the, the second about question that. was, would it be possible for the Green Mountain Care Board to bring us some recommendations for how to improve this whole complex issue. Are you talking more about the sec section B as well? Oh, both of them, yeah. I, I would feel more comfortable uh, looking at, at the information and providing recommendations instead of um, coming to a conclusion on exactly, you know, how you want to develop financial procedures as they state, as it's stated in Section B. So how would you, oh, how would you change, uh, so how would you change Section B to be more? I would suggest um, shall study and recommend we want recommendations. Recommendations, yeah. um, procedures, or study and recommend um, okay, so options for health care services. So instead of having that specific number, because I don't I think we have to start at the start at what we can get from VCARES. Okay. Because it, you know we we don't have all of the data as Jen referenced. Okay. Okay, so um, so we'll hold that thought, mm -hmm. but it's not impossible to get some information <coughs> from you either based mm -hmm. on the 2015 work that you did to build on that, uh, what other states are doing, and then um, to provide some recommendations more specifically on the billing piece. 
we could get something. I, know I could agree not to that. that specific, yeah. but I yeah. I'm okay. okay with that. Can I? All right. I would ask, you must be tracking the proposals that are out there around the legislature mm -hmm. for us to, because we spent the earlier part of this morning talking about other things mm -hmm. for you to do. Mm -hmm. And given the present workload of the Green Mountain Care Board and what we're adding, um, could you, and maybe you're not in a position to right now, but some assessment mm -hmm. of where the breaking point for the Green Mountain Care Board is. Sure. Good. Because okay. we can ask all of you. Yeah. Yeah, we will. Sure. Yes, I. We, we, we don't want to break. We are. I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the more we do, though, in terms of health care reform and, and clarifying yes. mm -hmm. the issues that are out there, the more we are going to have to depend <coughs> upon the regulatory body. So mm -hmm. it, it is difficult. We understand. And it's always the timing piece that becomes important. Too. Sure. And, and I'll just say we are willing to do the work. I just want to be realistic about right. what we can, mm -hmm. what we have in our data source mm -hmm. and, and what mm -hmm. what we can actually provide. Mm -hmm. okay. well, and I'd like to know what's realistic staff-wise. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, is there anyone else in the room who would like to speak to the proposal that we have before us? I don't have it in front of me, but I'd like to just say something. I well, go ahead. Uh, it's online, so, and we, we're a paperless group. But it's kind of hard to use a laptop when you're standing up. So I didn't yeah, hear about it. Anyway, so, uh, you know, go ahead. Uh, I don't have it on my phone. Here, she's, she's got, got a copy. Do you want to look up? Yeah. Thank you. Is, someone have, is there someone who has a copy? We'll let Jenny take a minute to read it and then uh, Actually, David. I'll just, okay. I'll say, what, I, what I want to say is just that ours is a capitalist society. As much as I would love to see the same payer system um, that was well organized, well set up, that worked for everybody but particularly for citizens. In this society, I can get information um, to make all kinds of purchases um, and know what I'm getting into, and there are plenty of people trying to get in the way of that. I would love it if somehow we could figure out a way, given the messed up system we have, so that if I'm gonna get a colonoscopy, and that may be one I can get information on, I don't know, um, I can make an informed decision, even if my insurance is going to cover it, as to where the best place for me is to get that. When I go to the doctor's office for a shot, I'd like to know if I'm going to get billed for it or not. And my testimony um, that I submitted earlier uh, addressed that kind of issue. If we're going to bring down health care costs somehow, we got to get a hand. We need to know what things are going to cost. And what do you hospitals and insurance companies together, it is the nature of things that hospitals are trying to bring in as much revenue as they can. They need to. Insurance companies are trying to spend as little as they can. So if, with that kind of arrangement, I just wonder who's looking out for my interests. Um, and then there are a lot of other people, older Vermonters, who don't have the ability to make those decisions for themselves because they So have I'm, I'm, I understand that I, well, I'm hearing your testimony again. I appreciate it. I think it is very frustrating to all of us not to be able to go and have a magic, the silver bullet. So, and what we've learned and all the testimony that we've taken is that what you are asking for is extremely complex. And, and we would like to do that. So we're taking a first step. So if this isn't the right first step, then we need to hear from you. So I, I'm just asking that you review the language that's here and give us some positive feedback or negative feedback or suggestions. So, okay, and I'm going to defer to David okay. on Good. that. Because I, you know, David it, represents Cove. 
And, and I know in our statutes, 18 BSA 9413 or something like that, it says that the hospitals have to post information. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We know that. That's there. We know that the federal government has required, has a tra transparency requirement now. And then if we're also going to go to every single physician's office and have that posted, some of that, that's another interesting complex process. Okay, so anyway. I'd be interested to know what the Mountain Care Board comes up with for suggestions as to what's available and whether, I mean, I don't know that. Okay. You know, whether there's yeah. some way that they can, that you folks can look at other states. Yeah. And how um, they're doing it. That's what we want. So, <laughs> you, because it's greatly frustrating. If, if we could take Colorado and put it right here in this state, we'd be done. And we tried to do that a few years ago with the finance <coughs> committee. We looked at all of the codes. We tried to get the codes in line. We said, let's do it. But then we found out how much it was going to take away from our health care dollars. And we said, well, let's look at what Colorado does. So I'm hoping that with the report and recommendations that we get back from the Green Mountain Care Board, there will be something uh, in there that helps us. So David. David Mickenberg on behalf of Cove and ARP Vermont. Um, I'll echo Jane's frust frustrations about uh, consumer price transparency in the healthcare market, but I won't talk about them specifically on this. I, I don't necessarily have a problem with the language here uh, or an update to the 2015 <coughs> report. We, we support the establishment of a statewide database. If any of you go on New Hampshire or Maine's databases, mm -hmm really incredibly useful, even if it doesn't say what your deductible is and how much. Just getting a sense that you can have a colonoscopy for $4,000 or for $400, depending on where you go, is really helpful for consumers. Um, there are a few pieces of S31 which do not, in my mind, the underlying bill or the proposed amendment seem all that complicated. For instance, to just to be able to tell a consumer that they may be sent to collection seems like a pretty basic concept. And I thought the testimony that we heard that one third of the members of the uh, AFT union have gotten collections letters, which is the union that... So this um, is very helpful. And, and remember that this is only part of the, yeah. this is only part of the bill. So we'll so go through the rest of the bill exactly. and identify those things that we feel are doable. Great. Yeah, that's all. That's mostly what I just wanted to say is that I hope okay. there will be a few of those items which are far less complex. So for instance, being told that you um, will be charged a facility fee. Just being told that you'll be charged a facility fee. It prepares people for understanding the complexity of what their billing is going to be. Yeah, I need to understand something, because I, uh, I agree that it's important. But when we talk about a facilities fee, how far does that definition go for a private physician's office, for example? private physician's office has overhead for the facility within which the staff work. So is that included in that? So you want to break out how much I'm worth and how much my secretary's worth and how much my business manager's <coughs> worth, how much my nurse is worth, and then how much I have to pay in taxes or utilities for my office. It gets complicated when we try to do that. Is that what we're trying no. to do? I'm not, I don't understand. No, it's a separate fee. I know it's the medic. I know yes. it's Medicare. My, my question yeah. is, I paid it when I went in for my physical. I paid a two hundred dollar, or my insurance, or somebody did two hundred dollar facility fee because I get access to everything that UVM Medical Center has. When they refer me to a dermatologist. Am I paying that fee again? And no one has ever told me that. And mine is just, there's a slip on the receptionist's desk when you check in that says you will be charged a facility fee. It's not in really bold print. Um, Fine print. It's not mouse print, but it's. You need glasses. Yeah, I couldn't see it without my glasses. But oh, I couldn't okay. see both. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see a stop sign. So is that what you're saying? No, I think facility but, fees are specific to hospitals yeah, right. or, or a surgical center. Right. Yeah. They also charge facility fees. So we so. should have that a one-time <coughs> facilities fee for your 
at least an annual facility. Okay. If you refer me to somebody else that's working in your system, I don't think I should have. I don't know if I do. I no, no, and you but no one's ever that. told me. They're very good about telling me what shots I will. My insurance does okay. or does not cover, or they're in process of deciding if they're going to cover the pneumonia shots. So, and I had to sign and say if they didn't, I'd pay for it. Um, but that one was new. We want to know. Yeah, that. I want to know. Okay. So you may want to hear from either the hospitals or somebody else yeah. about when the facility fees are imposed and when they're not. I think there right. may be, and I'm not prepared to speak to it, but I think I think there may be some more discrete standards at least mm -hmm. that Devin or someone else can help you understand for when there is a facility fee. I Maybe mean, that's what we could spell out. Yes. Um, that, well, I and mean, that's I think that's it needs to be transparent. Right. Whether or not it's five times or six times or one time, right. then it needs to be stated that yeah, that's if you're really say. sick and it's every time yeah. you're in right bigger yeah. trouble. Right. Is it every time that Medicare is billed or is it yeah. every time the Well it's once for that visit, but if I'm in the hospital and I get readmitted three times in a year, am I paying six hundred dollars for the privilege? Accessing the building. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think I, it's like procedures, but I would prefer the hospital. Right. I think, and that, right. So if you go right. for a colonoscopy, <laughs> you get charged a professional fee and a facility fee. If you go, the next day you go get an MRI, you get charged a professional fee and a facility fee. And if the next day you go get a CAT scan, you would again get charged a facility fee and a professional fee. That me is a little excessive. So can I jump in? Oh, right. I'm sorry. Devin Green from the Vermont Association of Hospitals and Health Systems. The facility fee is a Medicare-based mm -hmm. billing mechanism, and it is not done through Medicaid, it is not done with our commercial Medicare. insurance. It is said. Medicare. Um, it's not something we can change. Um, and so I'm not sure what. Well, so you charge the, the hospital would charge it every time, as David was saying, every time a patient goes in for a procedure. So if you go in three days in a row, if you stay in the hospital, are you paying a facility fee every day? I mean, does it Medicare? No, it's procedure based that? and it's required by Medicare to be charged that way. The federal government has taken steps to reduce that facility fee. I, be, I believe it's being reduced by 40% uh, by next year so that it's more in line with independent providers. Okay, so that's the good news and the bad news for hospitals. Right. So right. the hospitals are not paying. Pay. Yeah, no, because the patient's not paying. <coughs> so if, if, yeah, if, Medicare if Medicare is paying. requiring it, Medicare is paying it. Yeah, then why do we need to worry about the, that's, the, Maybe that's why we're going. And maybe they are they dividing out the cost for the hospital and then the cost of the professional, professional service. service. But has the professional service bill been lowered? I mean, it used to be you got one bill and it included your overhead. Now you're getting two bills. Something tells me the cost of professional service didn't get. Well, out. so it would be important to have those posted because that if you see an increase in professional services at the same time that the other one's going down, that's curious. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. That would be something. I'm, I'm not a billing expert, but I've just got a bill from the hospital, and one was a professional bill, and the other one says very much on the, on the title, facilities bill. So that's but that's the overhead. Yeah. yeah. That's what you would get from... That's what you would get from... And you get a hospital bill and a physician yeah, bill. Right, and this yeah. is targeting hospitals and not all other providers. Yeah. This is just based on hospitals. Okay, oh, we got one. Okay, so we will look at the, the, is there another section of the bill that you felt was your... Well, the ones, the ones, um, yeah, and like I said, if that one's too complicated for people to figure out, then we can do the ones that are, that are easier yeah. and less intrusive, I guess. Um, but, um, Certainly, the codifying the two things, the two insurance pieces that are in rule, I mean, seem to make sense um, since they're already in rule in the existence of it, unless it's like well, 40 pages. They, they are in rule, but they're sort of, I mean, 
I think they're spread throughout the rule okay. um, in a way that will make it so that I wouldn't have to codify large portions of the rule and I'm not sure what the gain is there. Okay, we could talk about that and if and how, how to do that. That might be a, another, another look. Okay. Susan. Uh, just briefly to go to a report also that the board had submitted, um, I think it was 2015 or 2016, and it actually lasted a couple of years where the board, um, led by board member Holmes, did a ton of work on um, provider reimbursements and bringing in this site neutrality issue. Mm -hmm. um, just, I think it lasted about two years and we it did culminate in a report to the legislature. And as um, Vaz has said, the federal government is actually um, doing quite a bit of work on site neutrality so that there are less of those facility fees charged. So I just wanted to add that as well. Are we getting into, because we did work two years ago, and I know before that on mm -hmm. finance, with mm -hmm. the professional mm -hmm. charges went up the mm -hmm. minute a practice got bought out and the insurance payments mm -hmm. went up for the same doctor in the same building, but that was over and above any facilities cost, right? I can see where there's a facility fee if I'm using the facility, and I can see where some insurance companies might want to break out what the overhead is even for private practice, mm -hmm. and where you might pay a benefit because you have all these specialist you can easily mm -hmm. access. But this isn't getting into that just basic cost fee mm -hmm. difference of what you pay an independent primary mm -hmm. care doc as opposed to one that works for a large research. We work very hard on that. Yeah, and we did was, too. Yeah, it was and a, it's an we're not sure how much progress we Right, made. I don't think it actually Passed. We never added on to a bill that went to the house and did not. It died. I wonder if we could look at that one. I don't know if we have time. Well, th there was there was important to look studies at. and the, you know. There yeah, was yeah. Well, it was H twenty. It was Colorado. It was I know. Just one last sure. point. I mean, I I I mean, I was part of that discussion. It's very complicated yeah. and very yeah. controversial. I, I think from a consumer perspective, focusing on the pieces that provide the greatest level of transparency. Maybe there's just one or two plus this language. Um, I think would be ideal just to, as you say, start to move the ball. to start moving it. Exactly. But we're not going to do anything. Absolutely. Right. I agree. And I know it's very painful for a number of people, but it's painful to people without it. So I think we need to. So, OK. So in terms of the language that we have, for the for this this whole section one area, we're okay with that. And Susan, you're going to make some. I, yeah, I would. Per, I, Jen, I, some suggestions. I will work with Jen. Um, okay. Maybe looking at other states as as we talked about, and then reporting back to you in Colorado. Yeah, I would just uh, for clarification, the Colorado work that was done a few years ago was not on this transparency piece. It was on uniform. Um, billing code. Billing code. Okay. No, but <laughs> it moves in a great direction. Uh, but well, I mean, look at all the states. I mean, okay. Well, are we be doing many things. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Susan Murkowski for MVP. MVP can support what you folks are talking about as this proposed language with um, the edits that are going to be suggested by the Green Mountain Care Board. We're, we're good with that. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's let's try and move beyond the languages right in front of us, and now go back to the bill and the sections that um, David had identified. The four things to just wait. Where's the bill? Is I'm I'm posting reposting it. Yeah. Okay. 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 We'll, we'll uh -huh. hold off until she gets closer. Okay. Oh, 
pull it up under there. Yeah. I do that. Yeah. You know, just while we're waiting today is Einstein's birthday. Oh, oh yes. It's also Pi Day. Oh, right. And it's my son. Pi referring to the oh. number or the three yeah. 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 And it's my son-in-law's birthday. My what are you supposed to do birthday on birthday was yesterday. Oh, hmm? My other was the day before. Do you want to do it? 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 Do a grandson and a son. There's a movie too. Which They're all together. Fine. We're having a light green cake. Yeah, you can do that too. Like that. <laughs> okay, I'm pulling it up off of the and then we'll go back to his. Not there. Okay, I'm going to wait because what, it's not coming up. Yeah, I requested it sometimes takes a minute, but if you search under, yeah, just under my bill, then yeah. you'll be able to find Yeah, it I hope it's going to go back. I did it. I've got it. And what's the number of that? 30, S31. S31. Oh, just. Maybe it's easier to be a paper story. committee. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely easier to take notes. Yes. Papers. Okay. It's messy. Does everybody have it? Yep. No. Go back. Just go back to where you get to. It says Thursday documents we and hit okay. Thursday again. Come to I have it. Wow, well, if you can't get through it, there's really no. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go, I think you might need to. Yeah. Refresh so again. So section two. I did refresh. Done. We don't need to do that. Yes. Sections, David, that you had identified, and, and we'll and we'll go through the whole thing. The one was uh, related, <coughs> so, um, related to uh, the possibility of incentive collections. Yeah, just be sure. I mean, I'm trying to see it's, about the Pearson. I think you said as introduced, oh, right? Yes. As thirty one. Yeah. Yeah. It's on page two, line one. The bottom one on page two. And to know if the dispute is will be sent to a The top one on page two. Yeah, line one. The patient has a right to receive an itemized detail and to know if the disputed bill will be sent to a collection agency. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That could, I mean, I think that's. The first part of that is. Don't they already is, do that? Right, they already Existing do law. Yeah. And that could, that, that's easily posted. Right. So, yeah. the, can I just talk that? <laughs> yep, go ahead. Um, Debbie Green from Buzz. Um, so the first part is already done. The um, the dispute of the dispute of billing part. Um, I just wonder the language. I wonder what the purpose of putting that on there would be when we want people to come and negotiate their bill and make a payment plan. So. Is the language the disputed bill that is a, a problematic? What should it be? Late payments. I don't know how to say it, but I think that something about how collection will be handled 
helpful. It would make sense. But I think the thing is, if we if we focus on the negative aspect, you know, the very worst thing that can happen at, up front, and, and you know, the hospitals work with people. They they set up payment plans. We, wouldn't we rather the message be not to scare people half to death that it's going to be sent to a collection uh, agency, but to say, you know. Say either say nothing or say you know we'll work the we'll yeah. work with you if there you know if you if there are any disputes or questions I mean, or that's always been my experience. Like you get disputed bills and you call up and you say so why did I get that? No, I don't. I didn't do that. At some, I can dispute a bill for a long time as a method to avoid mm -hmm. paying it. Oh. Well, some people do that. I so, uh, well, I mean, these things, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I can. And there are people who will. On the other hand, if you tell me up front your disputed bill is going to be sent to a collection agent, I guess if, I'm, if I've disputed this for two years just because I don't want to pay it, I can see then you say, all right, we're going to send this to a collection agency and you need to tell me. If you tell me up front, you're disputing this bill and oh, by the way, we're going to send this to the a collection agency if we can't resolve it. That to me is threatening. Yeah, yeah. I, think it's so saying, I don't think that's helpful. No, I, I don't think, think that's helpful it's at it's all. And I'm trying what about saying may? It says will there. Well, everybody knows that anyway, don't they? <laughs> no, eventually, I don't think they know it at any all. Any bill, your cable bill. So one sent. possibility would be to add some language either instead of or in addition to in this provision to identify um, the patient, whatever the the assistance center, the whoever it is that will do the working right. with the patients. So to say something like, right, to receive this bill um, to to be informed of the availability of the patient assistance services and to know that a disputed bill may be sent to a collection agency or you know, yeah. if you want to okay. include them all in there. Yeah. At least that okay. way I think need. that's better. Uh, besides the person who disputes the bill as a, as a delaying tactic, mm. it seems to me there probably are some people who dispute a bill because they think they, they oh, honestly yeah. believe they don't owe it. Right. And that bill being sent to a collection agency strikes me as well, it, how fundamental. Well, it's very unfair. I mean, but they only do that as the last resort. They'll, the last work, they'll work with people. Like the, so they to would the, rather get paid than send it to a collection right. agency. Well, so they want to help them, negotiate. They'll work with people to help them pay the bill to fail. Yeah. But there are people who think they don't own the bill. Right. Sometimes Shouldn't that wrong. be settled before the collection well, agency? Well, I think at some bill? point you say maybe it can't be settled. Huh. Right. I think that, so if I understand that part of the hospital association's concern is that not every, they, they don't send every bill right. to collections. Right. They no, don't no. want to say every disputed bill is go, will go to collections. No. They, they want to say, we will work with you, and if you, you know, if it works, if it ends up that we can't resolve this, we'll send it to collections. And I suspect in this, I know at least in my small hospital, most of the time, they cut a deal. Yeah. And most oh, they yeah, were absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how much, what are we talking about for a, a whole field that they would send based upon that anyways and up at the collection? Okay. You know, that was know. Is this a real case yeah, or is this from the New Yorker? Article? It's from the New Yorker. Well, I mean, maybe it's from me. Well. Yeah. Well, one, I mean, you're the test, you, you, heard, you heard testimony from the nurses union that one third of their members had gotten collections notice. So, um, I didn't hear that. Well, they testified. They that. testified. Well, in the we we as con yeah. and consumers, we have <laughs> discussions with consumers all the time who have repeatedly received collections the notice. So, so. Do you collect any information about how much really ends up in collections yeah. versus what you do in the overall? Work from people you work with. Yeah. Devin Green, Vermont Association of Hospitals and Health Systems. I would have to check on that. We collect information on what is written off, um, you know, what is considered uncompensated care, what is considered a debt. Um, I'm not sure if you have information on how much goes to collections, but I can certainly try to get that. I suspect each hospital has the individual information. Some 
random shift of a couple of hospitals that would be interesting. Okay. I'll also just say that the IRS requires hospitals to have their billing and collections procedure on the website that has information about their um, financial assistance policy. So if they don't have a billing and collections procedure already. So my, my suggestion is here to go back to Jen's um, recommendation a little bit ago and to, to look at that and then end up with the May piece um, or at least that the that the process will be provided to the patient up front and, and it's got it if, if it's possible that it goes to a collection energy agency that it may I think somehow that has to be shared yeah, I mean, I, I think you, you want to share that. The important thing is to let people know that there is a place to right. go to. You're getting I had, information, you're getting help. Yeah. There, it's a last resort. I had the constituent that called me that I, I know she went to the Green Mountain Care Board and the president of the hospital was there and they took care of her issue. But she had gotten a bill and it was one of those things where she was past her insurance and had had surgery and was going to the physical therapist on her own, thinking it was $90 or $90 a visit, which is what it had been. And then one of her visits was $450. Well, her physical therapist joined the hospital, there was the fee. She had called the hospital and found out she wasn't financially eligible for assistance but the minute the president of the hospital heard her story she said come on we'll we'll work on this and got it fixed but apparently she did not know because the first thing I said to her is I'm still paying off my surgery you know it's it's so much a month this is what you can pay you just pay it every month and they will work a deal and that's what people need to know that their support that, that financial it's support not services. financial support you're not no it, it is I mean, you can work out a payment structure that payment works structure. for you that it isn't I pay it or I can't pay it and it goes to collection that to me is the important thing that people know is that talk to them and they will that much okay. rather have okay so I want, I want, we want to try and get wrapped but right. so let's put that in and then on number 21 which is the facilities fee um, we heard there's an interest in having that in I do not know how to word that and it is Medicare but it's also a facilities fee that people get on their bill to help pay for the facility how that is sorted out with patients who are not Medicare patients. So that, I think we're, we're also hearing that. Oh, everybody pays. Yeah, so. Um, and I don't know if your insurance covers it. If you're on a health savings account, if, you, if you've got a high deductible, mm -hmm. do you pay that 200 dollar part of your fee day. if I go in for colonoscopy and a mammogram and an ultrasound am I paying six hundred dollars worth of facilities fees because I go in on three hundred or, or three different days and if I did them all on one day would I just pay the one I don't think it's a daily rate I think it's I mean I think it's, it's a per thing it's, it's, yeah it's, it's, Per procedure, procedure. But, but my, now I'm, I'm remembering from when we've talked about this in past years. I think Medicare is the only one that currently breaks it out. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's so the facility fees are included in the single rate paid by insurance. It's under Medicare that they're broken out into separate fees. But so the same amount, you know, the same not necessarily same amount, but a facility fee is still being used paid on insurance it's just all in one comprehensive in one payment. bill but I am paying that bill under my deductible yeah so I mean that that <coughs> so yes, when I, I that look up go toward your, when you pay your if you're if you're still working toward meeting your deductible then that full comprehensive bill 
at the insurer's negotiated rate comes out of your pocket huh. towards your deductible. If I'm looking up and pricing colonoscopies and not just going where my doctor happens to practice but decide for X amount of dollars I'm going to go to some stranger who only charges $400, um, does that, that $400 include a facilities fee? Do some other hospitals only charge $100? Am I going to think I'm getting a $400 bill and be really upset when I get a $600 bill for the colonoscopy? So I think that the insurer billing is comprehensive, it is inclusive of the facility fee, but the facility fee may not be the same from hospital to hospital. Mainly the difference that we talked about a couple years ago, I think, is the difference between academic medical centers, centers yes. and other hospitals. Yeah, hospitals charge for their overhead. It's, so it, let me ask this question. If, if we were to put something in here about breaking out facilities fees, facility fees, that would be a whole new for private, for, for non-Medicare services offered, that would be a whole new listing on the part of hospitals? Question. I, I don't know what's going on now. Yeah, it's hard. This is this yeah. is not easy. So, uh, can I ask um, the interested parties to work together, and maybe there's something we can put in here that would be helpful, so that we can get a breakout of facility fees. That I I can't think of anything else to do with that at this point. Senator Lines. Devin Green from the Vermont Association of Hospitals and Health Systems. I just want to say again that it sounds like what you're looking for is a breakout of overhead from the hospitals. And it seems a bit unfair to just target the hospitals with this requirement. That was my point earlier about physician offices. I know they get paid because they have an office, so a hospital. So I don't know if we're going to resolve it, but maybe. You and David could have a conversation and we'll see if we can get anything out of this. Sure. Okay. That'd be good. Sorry to do that to you. <laughs> I'm not sorry. To do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just can I have of a course. Yeah. <laughs> you are, yeah. And we will well, so here. Can I just make the comment? I mean, you know, if we're trying to make uh, you know uh, healthcare billing more like you know, buying a soccer ball or whatever. I you mean, don't break you know, down facilities. You don't break. I know. You yeah. know, your you know your store the has the a store hardware store's got overhead too, but they don't say this is this is how much the rent costs and this is how much this my is rent. This is the wholesale cost. cost you know, and this is the uh, yeah. And and making people do all that work to break that out, I don't know how that helps consumers. I, okay. I really don't. So this it this one's just makes the, the prime time is what I'm hearing. Yeah. But did, didn't it's not. if I understood you correctly, then you're saying that. It's Medicare that makes the hospitals. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. just that's Medicare. Right. So unfair or not, we don't have a lot of. We, don't we can't well, touch yeah, that. Yeah, we're not touching that. But they're talking but about fee over expanding above it to every professional. Well, so I think that the question that I'm hearing you come down to is: Is there anything useful in breaking out the professional fee and the facility fee? Does that help mm -hmm. consumers make? any different healthcare decisions. I think a couple of years ago when we talked about this, there was more interest in one comprehensive fee that didn't break out facility fees because consumers found that confusing. Um, right. And the idea was that the, the cost for the service should be sort of a holistic cost for the whole service that would include the overhead, regardless right. of whether it was an independent practice or a hospital-based practice. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out where right. you're, what gain you're looking to get. I, I think that the one price is what I'd like. I think the new thing is I've been going to the same medical office for years and I have been paying and I assume I have been paying their overhead. They are attached to the hospital building, but they join UVM. The last summer when I went in for a physical, there's a note on the counter that says I will be charged a $200 facilities fee. That is something that came in new over and above 
the cost, because I didn't notice the rest of the bill going down and saying in that. That's exactly. So, and I, yeah, that's the point. And I think so you did pass, yes, together, you passed yeah. language yes. two years ago to provide notice to patients yes. that their that yes. their provider's office was being affiliated with a hospital yeah. and that there may yeah. be some additional charges as a result. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I have one quick comment. And we need to talk with Katie about S seven. Okay. Right. Uh, is, is there? Is there? I know that there are people in the room who have come especially for S. 128, and a few just like to make a comment. Which is the PA. I live in Williston and practice in Essex Junction. And um, thank you for uh, considering the uh, the bill. Um, it, it's so important for the uh, healthcare. Um, for Vermonters um, to have uh, PAs be able to um, practice and um, to essentially update the legislation so that they're not um, that there aren't barriers and it, it's so um, you know PAs are, are part of the um, you know practice team with uh, physicians and we definitely need to continue that and, and access is, is an issue across the state and, and we want to be there so. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you did a fine job. And we'll, we will get full testimony uh, at a later date. And we'll take the bill up. It will have to be after crossover. And um, but we do want to take that up. Do you want to add anything? Do you want to go for the, the four points? No. No. Okay. Well, well, we'll look at the four points. Sure. You know, there's four short sentences. Good. Yeah. All right. Thank you both for being here. I apologize for time. I'm all behind. So I'm okay. Do you want to add anything? No. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you for being thank here. You. We're crunched for time, but we're, we're, we're going to take back? this up. Don't worry. Um, all right. So, Katie, thank you, Jim. It's been a fun day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming here. You have to stick Oh, no, that's for Kate. I'm sorry. It's for Kate. Oh, that's for Kate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. From Kate. Okay. That's on here. It is. Yes. So, Kate, you have the council where it's back on S7. You have a new graph. And I've already got it. of the plan and you remove the last sentence of this section that had um, specific directions about the plan there's um, a little bit of um, disagreement about that language and it wasn't necessary so we chose to remove it uh, section two well, there are actually two section twos in the bill because I wasn't sure if you wanted both or we were choosing one or the other so the first one is um, the language of the bill as introduced so this is a report on the evaluation of social service integration with accountable care organizations. This is language you have not looked at this morning. So by September 1st of 2019, the board is to submit a report to uh, Health Care Human Services, Senate Health and Welfare, evaluating the manner and degree to which social services, including services provided by the Parent Child Center Network, DAs, SSAs, and home health and hospice agencies are integrated into ACOs, certified ACOs, and the evaluation is to specifically address the number of social service providers receiving payment through the ACOs and for which services, the extent 
uh, to which any existing relationships between social service providers and ACOs address childhood trauma and resilience building, and recommendations to enhance integration between social service providers and ACOs if appropriate. So that was from the bills introduced. And you'll see on line 12, I and or, I wasn't sure which direction you were going, um, but we had looked at language earlier this morning um, that by 2020, the Green Mountain Care Board shall submit a report to this committee and Healthcare and Human Services detailing and the changes services offered by contracts executed between the DAs, SSAs, and Accountable Care Organization. Um, is, what, what would be wrong with putting that in Section 2 as well? Um, well, is it, is it the Department of Redundancy or? So it, it sounded like when you sent folks outside yeah. to make a decision that there is a, a preference for one over the other. So I kept them separate instead of combining them. What, what, did, what does the committee think about the choices we have? I like one. Yeah, I like the first one. Mm -hmm. We all like one. Okay. So I'll strike out. The Sorry. There we go. Um, and you know, before I keep moving, I should go back. Um, so I mentioned when I started that I've already received a, a bit of feedback from folks looking for small changes. Mm -hmm. So in section one, line eight, there was um, a requested change to the date that this um, plan was due. So my understanding is that um, AHS has to submit the plan to CMS by the end of December 2020. So uh, is that right, 2020? So this has them submitting it a whole year earlier. So the request, I think, was to change it to, what did you say, December 1st? I think January 1st, 20. November 1st? Is that, okay, 2020? November 1st, 2020. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. So, um, okay. I can't ask it for any earlier. So, no. sorry, I didn't hear. No, that's fine. Okay. So that was the request to change to section one. Okay. So that brings us to section three. This was the director of trauma prevention and resilience. The change here was on page four, just adding um, the new responsibility and we did not make any changes to that when we last met so that I left alone section four oh, okay. um, this I is was looking for the highlight but yep it's there's no highlight okay. that was intentional yeah. um, section four this is the Dulce conversation um, earlier we had oops there's some funny um, formatting we can change that and send it through the editors. Um, but we had specifically referenced the parent-child centers in the heading of this section because we've struck language um, talking about who is um, a social service provider employed by the PCCs. I've made a corresponding change in the heading to be social service provider. Mm -hmm. You'll see um, that that language about the employment has been struck from section four. And now there's language that on or before October 1st, the Director of Trauma Prevention and Resilience Development and the Director of Maternal and Child Health is to submit a report to uh, Health Reform Oversight in consultation with stakeholders and we've split it into two responsibilities. So the first is what we've already discussed, the model in which the social, a social service provider is embedded within a primary care practice, including recommendations for for the further development and expansion of the model and coordination with any proposals for reform resulting from the CHIN's um, review. Jenny? The apply the ointment. There's been some discussion about Health Reform Oversight Committee, and there's a possibility it won't exist? Won't exist. Oh. Let's so put in our committee. We might want to put this piece. Let's put our committee in there. And, okay. But, and the other one that, that would. I don't know what's going to happen so, this year, but I know last year it was the subject of some discussion. Okay. Okay. Um, so I could just say the committees like we normally do, or I could say yeah. the chairs because you're not meeting them. What is your preference? 
Oh, uh, well, we, you'd want the whole committee to know about it. Okay, so, so we'll just put the whole committee. So I, every time the chair gets something, then it's, the chair has to distribute it. So you'd like to go to everybody. I got to have everybody okay. to share the, share the reading. And the next piece, um, so the lead-in language was that you're requiring an assessment and in the new subdivision two, the Strong Families Vermont Nurse Home Visiting Program, and the requested change there is to be uh, Strong Family Sustained Home Visiting Programs. Say that again, the small family. The uh, Strong Family Sustained Home okay. Visiting Programs. That's my Can I ask a question? Uh, so I know that in the budget adjustment, there's a pilot program. How does that relate to this? The no, it, it isn't a pilot. They told me it was the money to train okay. the health care people. You're right. Got it. At least that's what I was told when I asked yesterday. Yeah, thank you. Good. Okay, so with those changes, so we picked number one in the first part. On that. And then, was there anything else? Changes that you just made? Yeah. So you added, you changed in section one the um, when the report is due from January 2020 to November 2020. Okay. You've chosen the second of the two section twos. Um, I'm fixing no, a format. No, the first, first one. The first, the first, first of the two section twos. twos. But yeah, you I said the second. That's not what I meant. I'm sorry. The, the, first, 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 the other section. <laughs> first Thank section you. two. Yes, the first of the two section twos. Um, in section four, we're correcting formatting. Uh -huh. We're striking health reform oversight committee and putting um, health care, human services, and health and welfare. Uh -huh. And then um, page five, um, correcting the name to strong family sustained nurse home visiting programs. No. no. With strong family sustained, sustained home visiting. Sustained. Strong family sustained home visiting. Yeah, no nurse. Right. Take the word nurse out. Thank you. So we're keeping Vermont. So if you check this, you're the So this family is just naming it. Just naming it. I'm making it clear. Strong Family Sustained Home Visiting Program. So the email is accurate. Okay. They're important to our lives. The email is accurate, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. On section one, we already need to submit the plan to CMS, and so I don't think it's necessary to require us to submit it to CMS on November 1st. The requirement from CMS is the end of performance year three, which is actually not November 1st. Yeah, I think CMS should take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we shouldn't put them in our state legislation. Right. <laughs> right. They might not be here by now. I know. <laughs> that EPA, they'll be out. Gone. We don't need those anymore. All we need is money. Well, there's that, but we're losing it. Yeah. We're, when you're good, you lose it. We should be Alabama and Louisiana. Yeah. Now, what don't you need to do is vote red. Right. Is there anything else? Is this okay? I'm, I'm not going to ask that question. Was this okay with the people around the table? Yeah. We're good. Okay. Thanks. You know, so the intent, the intent of S7 is not really to meddle, but we don't want to get in the way, but we do want to keep pushing things forward. And we want to keep it on the front burner. That, that's what this is, and we, and we need to keep doing that. That's it. And we really appreciate your time. So tomorrow morning at 9, we'll, we'll have this, and we'll go through it, and hopefully we'll be able to vote it out. And then 141, we'll look at this. That, that's a bill that we looked at last year, and I think we, I we think passed it. We passed it. Can you bring us the language that we passed? Yes. So we can look at that. And then we'll go through with, with Jen. Uh, we'll try to finish uh, S31. And we definitely will be looking at S53. So I ask you to read through S53 and any new language that shows up on our um, web page <coughs> should that happen okay and this is the committee that's early
So what I'm going to do is I might ask Jessa Barner to come up and talk a little bit. Or do you want to do that on S53 or no? Uh, sure. No, I mean, I think. Okay. Well, let's do that because I know I was going to ask you to comment when Jen was here and we didn't have time. So why don't we do that? So this is on S53 so we can pull that out. Thank you, Jessa Barnard with the Vermont Medical Society. Um, thank you for your interest in S53. So I just want to say one thing to Auburn. You'll be very happy when there's a director of prevention so that they can be directed to do things. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> thank you. And th you know, thank you. Um, so this, as introduced, uh, this is a bill about increasing the proportion of health care spending directed to primary care. Yes. And when we saw the bill um, introduced, and, and Georgia Maharis, who buys state primary care, reached out to a number of us before when the bill was even still a concept. So we've been talking about it um, since the late fall. And um, a number of us of organizations, and I don't want to speak for anyone else around the room, but a number of them are <laughs> um, Voss and. Um, UVM, Bi-State, uh, OneCare sort of chatted about what, the, how the bill looked as introduced, what direction we as organizations would be interested in seeing it go, and we did share with Senator Lyons um, some feedback from that group, sort of a consensus we came to, which was we absolutely want to build on the work that Green Mountain Care Board's already started and presented to this committee a couple weeks ago, looking at how much spending the different payers are directing to primary care, and um, we at least our organizations would have concern at this point about building a specific target into that language, mm -hmm. but let's really look at where we are and where that is compared to other benchmarks. So where are other states, where are other, if there are comparable nations, because we don't even, I think at this point, know what that number should look like and what um, that number determines. Mm -hmm. you know, so we want us to really get that baseline. Mm -hmm. And then a piece that I'm at least from my perspective really interested in is what, having any analysis look at the pros and cons of different levers of increasing primary care spending. So I think we want to be careful about unintended consequences. We don't necessarily want, we are we not necessarily able to cut spending on tertiary or specialty care, but how can, and, and if we do it through fee for service, what are the pros and cons of that versus can we do it through the way we're going with sort of more bundled payments or um, capitated payments. So I think we really, as our, our organization, want to look at where we are compared to baselines and what might be ways about going, uh, we could go about increasing primary care spending. And what's already underway, for example, through the ACO, trying to target more of that funding to primary care. So very interested in the approach. We had some suggestions and language in terms of um, this, the focus of the in initial analysis of what we're, we're looking at. So. Unless it's overly complicated, we'll we'll look at that tomorrow with Great. Jen and Great. make a determination if we can get something started and so that the other the body, other body, the house can look at it. We'll, we'll just look at that. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.